Hello everyone and welcome to Chapter 5, Communication Aid Strategies Using Tools of Technology. At the end of this video, one will know how to evaluate multimodal texts critically to enhance receptive listening reading, viewing, and writing skills. One will know how to convey ideas through oral, audiovisual, web-based presentation for different target audiences in local and global settings using appropriate registers. One will know how to adapt awareness of audience and context in presenting the ideas. Unlocking difficult terms. Semiotic system. A way of thinking of communication and language as a system of signs and symbols that are used to convey meaning such as linguistic, visual, audio, gestural, and spatial. Multimodal text refers to the combination of two or more semiotic systems. Typography, critical tool in visual communication, communicates the message, including ensuring words that are quickly or easily read and understood, provide visual appeal, retaining viewer interest, and inspiring action. Tangent is something or a thought that touches but doesn't intersect or is irrelevant. Talks about topics unrelated to the main topic of discussion. Other terms are discussed. Terms. Other terms are discussed in every subtopic. And now, let's talk about multimodal text. What is multimodal text? Multimodal texts, these are instructional resources that incorporate barriers of communication, just like writing, reading, speaking, listening, and viewing. And now, let's proceed to the elements of multimodal text. First element of multimodal text is the linguistic. Linguistic includes vocabulary, structure, grammar of oral reading language. It is most widely used element because it can be read and heard on both paper and radio. Next element of multimodal text is the visual. It includes color, vectors, and viewpoint in still and moving images. Through visual, it helps the writer to communicate meaning in a way that can be seen. The next element of multimodal text is the audio. It includes volume, pitch, and rhythm of a music and sound effects. It means true sound can catch the attention. The next element of multimodal text is gestural. It includes movement, facial expression, and body language. Its simplest term, gestural mood, refers the way movement interpreted. The next and the last element of multimodal text is the spatial. It includes proximity, direction, position of layout, organization of object in space. Multimodal text can be live multimodal text are shown through combination of different modes such as gestural, spatial, and oral language. In other words, live multimodal text involves presentation in which both the performer and audience are physically present. Some examples of multimodal text are dance performance and oral presentation. It can be digital multimodal text. This is presented through dynamic combination of various moods across written and spoken language. A still and moving visual image, audio, gesture, and spatial communication resources. 
Some of its examples are films, animation, slideshow, e-poster, and many more. It can be paper-based multi-model things. These are conveyed through the reader's varying combination of written language and still images. Meaning to say, paper-based multimodal text is something that is printed, for instance, we have infographic, poster, comics, and pictures. Evaluating messages. First, we must know what is the message. The message refers to the information or ideas that text, the image, or the symbol wants to convey. Sometimes, we encounter images and icons, and these things conveys a message. On the other hand, iconology is a study that deals with the meaning of symbols in the message. Iconology is also a study that deals with our culture, such as visual culture and art history. On the other hand, iconography are those images or symbols that conveys a particular meaning. Some examples of symbols and icons that we might encounter when we go to the toilet area, the female and male symbol, the far exit, trash can, and many more. And in our Christian views, the lamp represents Christ or symbolizes Christ, and the dove represents the Holy Spirit. Second, we must know the purpose of the message that will help a person in his or her living. It's either work, home, or in school. A message can also be persuasive wherein a person wants to convince another person that will affect his or her actions or views in life. Lastly, a message can be effective wherein a person shares his or her opinions about the things in her environment. It could be a positive or negative experience. And this expression of feelings is also known as self-disclosure. Next, how is the message conveyed by a text or by an image. This refers to the manner of presenting the message. It can either be in the multimodal text such as spatial, audio, linguistic, or visual, and etc. On the other hand, it can either be through icons or through symbols. Next, who is or who are the target audience of the message? The target audience refers to the people the message is intended for. It can either be uh, children, adults, and many more. And the target audience of the message refers to the receiver. Good day, everyone. I am Michelle Angesera, and I will discuss about the types of audience. So first... Let us define audience. According to the dictionary, audience is the assembled spectators or listeners at a public event such as play, film, concert, or meeting. In marketing, this is where you determine your ideal client right now or in the future. The first type of audience is the neutral of audience. This will be the kind of people who are directly or indirectly interested or don't want to invest in your idea. They appear calm, rational, and engage of the surface. But be mindful that many people who consider themselves objective already have their minds made up. True neutrality is rare. Speakers in this setting should present both sides of any issue they discuss. Not trying to persuade, but instead relying on pro, con, or problem solution organized patterns. They also should identify those parts of their message where everyone agrees and build on the common ground. 
The second type of audience is the hostile audience. These are the people who are in strong disagreement with your idea. Hostile audience seeks opportunities to steal the spotlight or ridicule the speaker. These people are often defensive and emotional. A speaker in this environment should take a non-confrontational approach, organizing the message in a topical, chronological, or geographical pattern. As with the neutral audience, Humor should be avoided, and supporting neutral should be based on facts and expert opinions. The third type of audience is the uninformed audience. These people who are unfamiliar with the topic or discussion at hand. Uninformed audience is one does not share the same set of knowledge as the presenter, being able to educate an audience before proposing an idea or a solution can lead to a very enjoyable presentation for the speaker and audience. When it is clear that you have new and valuable information to share, they will be interested and engage right for the opening lines. The fourth type of audience is the expert audience. The audience here is already in tangent with what you are telling them. In this type of audience, document formats are often elaborate and technical style and vocabulary may be specialized or technical. Source citations are reliable and up-to-date and documentation is accurate. The fifth and the last type of audience is the business audience. These are the people who value so much of their time you would not want to consume much of it is generally associated with a business marketing message which highlights advantages and benefits of a business product or service. Lastly, what are the other ways of presenting the message? A message can be translated into other languages. In some cultures, such as those of Scandinavians, Germans, and the Swiss, Communication occurs predominantly through explicit statements in text and speech, and they are thus categorized as low-context cultures. In other cultures, such as the Japanese and Chinese, messages includes other communicative cues such as body language and the use of silence. Essentially, high-context communication involves implying a message through that which is not uttered. This includes the situation, behavior, and paraverbal cues as integral parts of the communicated message. Developing audience awareness. When we talk to someone face-to-face, -face, we always know just who we're talking to. We automatically adjust our speech just to be sure we communicate our message. For instance, when we talk to three years old, we shorten sentences and use simpler words. When we talk to college professors, we use longer sentences and more formal language. In short, we change what we say because we know our audience. Interestingly, many artists don't make the same adjustments when they communicate to different audiences with their media, usually because they don't take time to think about who will be reading or seeing what they deliver. But to be sure that we communicate clearly with our media, we need to adjust our message, how we convey it, and what information we include by recognizing the different audience can best understand different messages. Considering your audience, for me, this is the first step you need to do to feel empowered to impress and influence others by truly getting to know who they are before to present a certain conversation. Connection to our audience is a great thing we need to do to work out to achieve the smooth and continuous flow of communication. Mind the generation gap. This is the important factor to guesstimate because uh, the gap in between has its own differences of opinions, values, attitudes, and beliefs. We need also to make sure we know something about their culture, beliefs, values, and political preferences before giving a statement or a topic 
to avoid the risk of offending or alienating them. For example, you are going to meet a person from a foreign land. Of course, first need to do such research behind their customs, tradition, and culture so that you will have an idea how they dress, what they eat, how you are going to flow, humor, and their interpersonal communication skill. In other words, internet is functional and helpful for finding information. For visual language of communication, this is another way of conveying message through a medium. You might be surprised when you hear random feedbacks of your audience, but you need to make adjustment as necessary. Accept and adjust. Just express your heart in your medium with clarity of your visual and at the same time, the meaning behind it. Lose off the pressure within yourself and you will see the beauty it can do because that release pressure can create meaningful dialogue between you and your material. In any non-verbal or verbal communications, always remember this acronym FABER, which F stands for formality in words and tune we apply. A for acceptance in every opinion that we hear. B biases, avoid one-sided treatment. I for integrity, speaks with firm values and principles. And R for respect, Respect what they have as an individual. Offering them what they want to learn is the best way to earn appreciation.